Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're not making soap, we're making whipped body butter and this is so luxurious. I have a previous video where I shared the recipe. I'll share it again today. I love it that much. <laughs> it bears repeating. But I'm doing a whole Valentine's lineup of products and I'm going to be making Love Spell body butter today using Bee Scented's Love Spell Dupe, which is wonderful. It's fruity, delightful. I love it. I've used it in a couple other products here on YouTube. I'm a fan. <laughs> so uh, here it is. I already made a batch. We're going to remake it today. It's selling very quickly. The fragrance is popular. The body butter is popular. So this is the finished product. It is in a four ounce jar. I label it. I shrink wrap it. It's ready to go. Loving it. And when I sell one, I sell with a little wooden scoop to get in there so you can keep your product nice and clean and not cross contaminate with your hands and you know our hands are wonderful germ carriers so if you get one you're going to get a scoop to go with it and i'll bring you along with the whole process where i wrap it and all that all the good stuff but this recipe is so delightful and my secret not secret ingredient is arrowroot powder i put a nice dose of that in the finished butters you know as we're whipping it and what that does is it really cuts the greasy feel the shine now this is a butter so when you first put it on it's shiny you got i mean it's loaded with oils that's what it's made of butters and oils but the arrowroot really kind of helps knock down that shine helps take the grease feel out it absorbs very quickly so you put a little on rub it in just wait a minute and it's going to sink right into your skin and not leave that shiny sort of oil slick feel i'm very happy with it i love it it's a great ingredient added in here for the skin benefits arrowroot's fantastic so uh anyway we will get talking about all of that later. I'm gonna get everything pulled together and of course sanitize my entire work surface. We want a very clean surface when we're working and I'll get my jar sanitized. All the equipment that I'm gonna be using all gets washed in warm soapy water, then spritzed down with 99% alcohol, rubbed out with a paper towel and the whole surface is clean. It's my uh, surgical field, if you will. <laughs> So it's important, all that good stuff. So, and we'll talk about the ingredients as we go. I'm gonna talk about a preservative in this product, which you don't need. I do put one in and I'll talk about why when we get there. So I'm gonna get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some really luxurious body butter. All right, it's time to measure out all the hard oils and butters in here and get them melted down. I do melt in the microwave in bursts. Um, some people really hate the microwave. This would be wonderful in a double boiler if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but I do it in short bursts because I don't want to overheat the shea butter because it can get grainy if um, you overheat it. So anyway, that's how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. But anyway, let's get to measuring and I will tell you the amounts as I go, as well as it'll be written in the description box below, all the good stuff you know. So I'm gonna start with 11 ounces of shea butter. And uh, you know, can you beat that? It's so wonderful. All these butters are just so luxurious. It's 11 ounces of shea. And now I'm gonna do seven ounces of mango butter. And this is the mango butter I'm using today. Um, when I run out of this, I bought some from Soper's Choice, uh, but this is what I'm using today. I got this on Amazon and it's been a wonderful mango butter. It's very firm when it's uh, you know cool. It's a nice firm butter, but so good for your skin. So seven ounces going in. And now, last but not least for the butters, I have my cocoa butter wafers, which I love. I get these from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I like the wafer form because they're very easy to measure. Oh, let me tear out my scale. And we're going for four ounces. But yeah, cocoa butter is so hard uh, when it's cool that the wafers make measuring very easy. So just a personal preference. There we go four ounces of cocoa butter. And now I'm gonna tear that out. We're gonna do 11 ounces of coconut oil. And I've had a lot of people ask me uh, for a replacement for the coconut oil. What can you use in replacement of that? I don't know. I've never made this without coconut oil, but some people have coconut oil sensitivities. So I would just say to, um, 
you know, experiment, scale this down and try a little batch and experiment what it's like without the coconut oil or replace it with something else. But I use coconut oil, so I don't really know a good replacement for that. If you're watching and you do have a good replacement, please leave it in the comments down below for other people to maybe uh, glean from your knowledge. That would be wonderful. So let's do 11 ounces of coconut oil in here. All right, so here is all of those luscious hard oils, which is the coconut oil and the butters. I'm gonna go melt this down in bursts, stirring in between, um, just gently to melt it. Again, you can double boil if you want to. And then uh, once it's all melted, we'll come back and add the rest of the ingredients. All right, so this is after about four 30 second bursts and it's warm, so I'm just gonna let the warmth of the oils melt the rest of it so it's not overheated. Uh, just wanted to show you the progress here. It just kind of looks satisfying to me and it smells so good. Uh, I'm using the unrefined cocoa butter wafers so they have a natural chocolate scent, which I love. Um, if you don't like chocolate, then get the refined white ivory um, wafers or refined, it won't have that strong chocolate scent, but I love it. <laughs> so anyway, it's just a very gentle process. And now after this is all melted together, I'm going to add my liquid oils in here and then pop this in the refrigerator and let it cool back down. But you do need to melt it all together and get it stirred up really well and incorporated. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. All right, so I'm back for the liquid oil portion, and uh, before I get the big oils, I have my vitamin E oil. I like to add this. You can omit it if you don't like vitamin E oil or have an issue with it. Um, I'm showing you the numbers here on the scale because it literally doesn't register. I don't put a ton. Just do a little zhuzh, <laughs> a little squeeze. That's it. Now, I had a couple people on my last video. Uh, one person got very upset that I didn't give you a measurement for this. Um, it didn't even register. So I don't know what to tell you. It's just a squeeze. I like it in there. If you have an issue, again, please leave it out. It's, you know, it's not gonna be a huge effect in the texture of the body butter if you omit that. So feel free to leave it out if you want to. So now let's get on, I gotta turn it so I can read the scale better. And I will tell you the next oils are jojoba oil and grapeseed oil. And I like those uh, in my body butter because uh, jojoba oil is considered, it's almost like a, um, I don't wanna say a dry oil, but it is, it's not a greasy oil, it's very light, it's really good for your skin. And grapeseed oil also is another light, sort of um, not greasy, it's a drier oil, if you will. They're both really great for your skin, so let me grab those. All right, here is the jojoba oil that I am using today. I got this from Soper's Choice. They have great prices if you buy in bulk. The shipping, the freight shipping is kind of outrageous, but even when you factor in the shipping rate, they still have really good prices on oils and things. So this is the jojoba oil, and I'm going to be doing 11 ounces total of the liquid oil. So I'll split that between the jojoba and the grapeseed. So five and a half jojoba, five and a half grapeseed. Now we're gonna just incorporate this all really, really well um, before we go to chill it. I want all the oils blended beautifully. And then after it's chilled and we start doing the whipping, I'm going to add in my special ingredient that keeps it from feeling greasy on your skin, my arrowroot powder. And I will also add the fragrance and a little preservative. So we'll talk about that when we get to that, but that is after this is at a pretty solid state and ready to get whipped up. All right, well, the oils are cooling. I'm gonna get my little uh, cocktail of the fragrance. I'm doing Love Spell today, of course, and my preservative, OptiFen. Um, and I do like this, it's a good preservative. Uh, it's formaldehyde-free, paraben-free, um, For as preservatives go, it's a nice one. You do not need to put this in this product today because there is no liquid portion in a body butter. It's just oils. Um, I put one in there, I choose to, 
because I feel like this is going to be in your bathroom. I know I put it on after I shower. There's humidity in there. My body is damp. I may be putting damp fingers into the product, even though I do give a little wooden scoop with this when I sell it. But um, water may be introduced to this. And so for me, this is a safety factor. Uh, the usage rate on this is per volume. So you add up all the ingredients, you get a total number, and then you look up the usage rate. The usage rate on Optifen is 0.3% to 1.5%, depending on what you're doing. I'm gonna go a little bit higher than 0.3%. So for the volume of this batch today, which is 44 ounces of oils and butters, I'm gonna do 0.3 ounces of Optifen in this product. And then again, with the Fragrance, you also want to get your total volume, look up the usage rate, and I tend to go a little shy because I don't want to over fragrance. This isn't a perfume, and you may be having a deodorant and a you know body fragrance afterwards, so I don't want to you know kill you with fragrance, <laughs> overwhelm you is what I mean. So I am going to be doing two ounces of this fragrance, which is within the usage rates for a body product. So two ounces of the fragrance. Let's get that in there, and I'll quit talking so much. I get so many questions though about amounts and usage rates and I want to encourage you, oh, sorry, I'm talking and measuring, um, as a maker to really learn usage rates and figure them out for yourself. Once you know that and you can own it, you're gonna have so much more confidence making your products and you're not dependent on someone else telling you. And you know what, what if I give you a number and it's incorrect? So it's always good for you to do your own math and so you have confidence in what you're doing. So I'm gonna tear that out. I'm gonna do 0.3% or 0.3 ounces, sorry. It's not much. There we go. But it's just a nice safeguard in the product, so I like having it in there. Again, you can skip this if you want in this product. So there's that all ready to go. It's just gonna sit here and we're just waiting for those oils to cool down. All right, so it's been a little over an hour. I popped this in the freezer and it's definitely firming up. I'm gonna go ahead and whip it with my little handy dandy vintage kitchen aid here, which has serviced me very well. Um, and then if I need to, I will probably need to pop it back in the refrigerator and cool it down. Um, but let's whip it up here and see what we've got and then we'll take it from there. But you can see it's still liquidy in the middle. But let's just do a check in here and uh, you can never whip this too much. So let's do it. So this is gonna obviously need to get a little more cool. It's nice and fluffy. It's kind of a lotion-y texture right now. Sorry, the, the two different gloves, I lost my other glove. Um, so anyway, <laughs> pardon the two different gloves. Let's move on here. Uh, so while it's still mixable and it's all cooled off now, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients in here and then I'll just keep chilling for about 30 minutes, check in, whip it, chill, whip, until I get to the nice, piping consistency that I want to be at. So at this point, you're just going for consistency. So here is my little cocktail of fragrance oil and preservative. We'll go ahead and add that in here. It's kind of nice when it's more fluid like this because it won't splash up quite as much. When it's really stiff, you can get a little splashy thing going on. And here is my secret, not really secret ingredient, which is arrowroot powder. Um, and I've had people ask, do you have to use arrowroot powder? No, um, you could try uh, like a very fine ground colloidal oat. You could do cornstarch. I like arrowroot. It's such a fine grind. Uh, it's a powder and it absorbs. It really just takes the greasy feel. It's good for your skin. Um, and this is my preference. So the amount that I'm adding in here is, this is a coffee scoop, if you can read on there two tablespoon coffee scoop. I'm gonna do two of these. Uh, my previous video, I confused some people. 
It's really hard. Arrowroot is very light, so if you wanted to measure it on the scale, it would be a bigger volume of what you need, if you know what I'm saying. A dry measurement is different than a liquid measurement. So I'm gonna do a measuring thing. So I will do four tablespoons of arrowroot powder in here. So we got one and two. And there it is. And now I'm going to sort of just hand mush this a little so it won't splash and poof up and then we'll get to blending. show you what I'm doing I have this metal spoon so it's very you know hard metal is hard and I'm going around making sure because the outside of the container obviously is going to get colder faster than the inside and I don't want any of the really hard uh, bits to stick on the side so this helps me scrape down and make sure I get all of those chilled out bits on the ends mixed in here when I go to mix if that makes sense just want to make sure a rubber spatula this is too flexible it won't get all the edge bits and you know i have such good ingredients in here i don't want to miss a bit so i'm kind of a stickler about getting all those little bits incorporated and this is actually nice and chilled once you get those outside chili bits mixed in um, with the center part it's nice and firm so i think i'm going to go ahead and whip this up here and i think we'll be ready to start piping into our containers So we're at a really nice, thick, creamy consistency. It's holding. I'm going to pipe this in the bags. Um, you can keep whipping this and incorporating more air and chilling it and getting it fluffier and fluffier. The downside of doing that, uh, the upside is it looks lovely and it's just feather light. The downside is, is that this is, you know, a meltable product and if it melts, it sinks in the jars and aesthetically it can be not pretty after you ship it. So I like kind of a medium whip where it's a little bit dense. I'm going to fill the jars nice and full and um, it's still very light, but um, it's not a lot of air. I want you to get more body butter and less air. <laughs> so let me get the piping bag out and we're gonna get going filling those containers. I've got them all in the jar. I have 12, three and a half generous. They're like 3.7 ounce jars here. This is a four ounce jar and it holds three and a half with the fluffy. If you whip it more, it'll only hold three ounce, you know, depending on how 
fluffed up your product is. So there is over three and a half ounces in each of these four ounce jars. And then I got two little ones. These are two ounce jars and they have one and a half ounces in them. So this will be a little gift for somebody. The lids that I got this time, budget cuts y'all, prices are going up on everything and the metal lids were hard to find uh, that I used in my previous batches and they were twice as much. So I got these nice little ribbed black tops. They look great with my label. Um, and they do have a liner in there that kind of seals it down. So I'll do my little one first, tap it down, lid it up, and I will shrink wrap these after I get everything labeled. But there is the little two ounce one. And then here are my four ounce lids. The jars and these lids are from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm not affiliated with them, but I do shop with them often. They have very good prices um, and they had a sale going on there jars and lids. So that's where I picked these up. So we're gonna lid all these up and then I will come in, do the labels and shrink wrap. But there it is. It's a nice size jar. These are just wonderful. All right, now everything's lidded, the gloves are gonna come off and I'm gonna get my labels printed and we'll come back. All right, it's time to label. And um, I actually purchased this font on Etsy, I get asked, so I bought this font. These labels are from onlinelabels.com. And uh, so anyway, I get them all printed out and I am not computer savvy, so please don't ask me for a tutorial. I muscle my way through this and um, it's a struggle. I ride the struggle bus for labels. So there are better YouTubers out there for labeling. Don't ask me. I this is, a, this is one of my challenges. But anyway, here's a pro tip for getting a label on a round bottle. Anything will do. Um, I just happened to throw my little spatulas down and my bottles are all sealed up. I wiped them down with a nice clean paper towel so they're squeaky clean and that holds them steady for me. <laughs> because I used to like chase them around. They were rolling. I'd get the label out. So anything to hold them still is good with me. So here is my label and I just get it lined up on here and that just kind of holds it for me. And once I get the center down, we're good to go. And there we go. I'm going to get these labeled and then we will get to shrink wrapping these up. Again, the jars and the lids are from Wholesale Supplies Plus and my shrink bands are from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And they tell you uh, when you buy a jar, they tell you the lids that are the correct size. They tell you the shrink bands that are the correct size. They have all the information there. So just go check out their website. I'm not an affiliate, but I do like to shop with them. So that's what I'm using. Let me get the rest of these labels on. So after it's all said and done, I have a little bit of scrapings in the bowl here. So let's give you a product demo. I'm going to save this, bring it up after my shower and lotion my whole body with what's left in here. A little goes a long way, but um, so there it is. It melts very quickly. You can see that shine, but watch after I rub it around with that arrowroot powder, it's going to absorb in and it just is so nice feeling. It just feels very smooth very creamy and it absorbs really quickly. I love to rub it into my cuticles and um, it is gonna be a little shiny because of all the butters, but if you just give it a minute, it will soak right on in and you lose the shine and it's very nice. It just leaves a very silky, non-greasy feel. It's lightweight, I love it. So there it is. I'm gonna bring this up to my bathroom for <laughs> after bath time, I'm gonna use up, not a bit goes to waste here. 
first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And if you've been enjoying it and want more videos like this, please consider hitting the like button, the subscribe, the bell for notifications, all that good stuff so you don't miss a thing going on in the soap studio. And again, thank you so much for being here.